little more than a decade ago, thousands of Christians called Mosul, Iraq home. That is no longer the case. ISIS militants took over the city and essentially wiped out the Christian population. It's something that they're continuing, that brutal behavior all across the region. Author of the new book, Defying ISIS, Johnny Moore has visited that area many times. Joins us now for a firsthand account. Johnny, always good to have you with us. Thanks, Shannon. Good to be with you. And sometimes, I mean, you have been hammering on the subject for a long time. You've seen it firsthand, and it seems like a lot of people are just now waking up to something that appears to be a genocide. You have talked with the leaders there who are watching their churches burn down, um, their parishioners kidnapped, raped, killed, sold into slavery. Um, why do you think it's taking so long for this message to get through to the West? I, I think it's two things. I, I think, first of all, people just didn't know it was happening because they couldn't believe it was true. I mean, these stories are just horrific beyond belief. I mean, children being killed for their faith, women being sold by the thousands on slave markets, churches that have had continual worship for 1,600 years being destroyed. I mean, it, it just was just incomprehensible to people. And you know, I mean, you and I sitting on this very program a year and a half ago talking about what was coming, and it came. And here we are in the holiest week in Christianity for two billion Christians around the world and we're witnessing a once in a thousand year crisis that has seen the total elimination from some of the most ancient Christian populations in the Middle East Christian populations who got the gospel first from the apostles themselves and it's time well actually there is no time left we've got to rush we've got to do it quickly we've got to rescue these people and stop it from continuing yeah, and there are millions of refugees who are flooding now into surrounding countries. That's an enormous uh, taxing on their resources, their governments. I know a lot of aid organizations are moving in and trying their best, but it is, uh, I mean, the numbers can be overwhelming. And ISIS obviously has been very specific in targeting, targeting specific populations, but also the churches, the artwork, the, um, the sacred texts. I mean, they very much want to wipe out any religion that doesn't agree with their own. Yeah, I mean, the world watched in horror as ISIS destroyed the ruins of these ancient cities, as they uh, broke down the crosses on, on ancient churches. Even in the last week, they've done it again. They, they destroyed a fourth century monastery uh, just outside of Mosul. And, and by the way, no one really paid attention to it. But after they destroyed the monastery, then they destroyed the remaining Christian houses in town. And there weren't any Christians left. And there weren't any people worshiping in that church anymore. In fact, there aren't any Christians left in that whole part of the Nineveh Plain. So they don't have anyone left to kill. They don't have anyone left to imprison. And so now they're destroying their history. And that is why it's genocide. And, and by the way, there are a few fledgling populations that we still can rescue. They're the displaced ones that are living in refugee camps in deplorable conditions without the aid that they need. And then there's still those that are under ISIS's influence and control. But see, the United States and other Western powers and other countries with influence aren't doing enough. I mean, just about 14 days ago, ISIS kidnapped 300 Christians along the Kabul River. They did it in a convoy of 40 clearly marked ISIS vehicles going to 10 unarmed Christian villages. And yet there wasn't a single airstrike. There wasn't a single attempt to, to, to push them back. And by the way, the Christians that were kidnapped there, the 300, we haven't a clue what has happened to them. All we know is that they've been paying the ISIS tax for the last year. But finally, ISIS said, OK, we're done with that. So now we're going to take you and we're going to imprison you. And only God knows what will happen to them. So the question I'm asking all over planet Earth, uh, just over and over and over again, is how many Christians are going to be imprisoned? How many children are going to be killed? How many women are going to be enslaved and raped? Like, when is this going to end? Because we're not taking it seriously enough. We're only doing seven to 12 air airstrikes a day in Iraq and Syria. During the Bosnian conflict, it was like 140 a day. We're not taking it seriously enough. Yeah, and while uh, there is a great focus on the Christians who are being specifically targeted, uh, and as you mentioned, essentially for genocide, we know other religious minorities, the Yazidis and others of the Islam, uh, Islamic faith who don't necessarily agree with what Islam is promoting and what they adhere to, all of them are in danger. Johnny, thank you for the awareness you're bringing to this. You're doing a lot of important writing, too. Uh, thanks for being with us today. I am tired and so weary, but I must travel on till the Lord comes to call me away, away. Where the morning is bright and the Lamb is the light and the night is as fair as the day. There will be peace 
peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. Oh Lord, I pray there'll be no sorrow and sadness, no trouble I'll see. There'll be peace in the valley for me, for me. Well, the bear will be gentle, and the wolf will be tame, and the lion will lay down by the lamb. The lamb. Well, the host from the wild will be led by a child I'll be changed from the creature that I am I am there will be peace in the valley for me someday there will be peace